name's Emily, and I'll be teaching you a little bit about the atypical antipsychotic named Risperidone. Now follow me, and we'll step into my office. Welcome. This is my patient, the thinker. He has been experiencing both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Now his positive symptoms have included hallucinations, delusions, sometimes he has had aggressive behavior such as assaultiveness or verbal abusiveness. On the other hand, his negative symptoms have included anhedonia, which means he's been unable to experience pleasure, anxiety, depression, sometimes cognitive blunting, and even suicidality. Now in order to treat both the positive and the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, I would prescribe him Risperidone. Now I'll show you a diagram of how Risperidone works on the brain and its neurons. Risperidone acts as an atypical antipsychotic, meaning that it works on both the serotonin and dopamine levels in the brain. Here is a diagram of a synapse, a space in which two neurons communicate with different levels of neurotransmitters. Serotonin is represented in orange, dopamine in purple, and neuroepinephrine in green. Each one of these chemicals has its own personalized receptor site on the second neuron when it, where it, it is received. Depending on the different amounts of chemicals, different signals are sent through the pathways of the brain, causing abnormal behaviors, or in this case, the positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. When negative symptoms are present, there are decreased serotonin levels in the brain. Risperidone then blocks a serotonin 2A receptor, causing an increase in the chemical and therefore reducing the positive symptoms. Risperidone also acts as an antagonist at alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptor sites, where norepinephrine is received, and this causes a decrease in depression. When positive symptoms are present, dopamine levels are too high. Risperidone blocks the dopamine 2 receptor sites and therefore lowers the levels of dopamine and also reduces the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. These chemical adjustments need to occur within the brain's pathways, which require certain amounts of activation in order for patient's symptoms to be relieved. When risperidone is taken, the activity in the mesolimbic dopamine pathway is lessened, allowing for positive symptoms to decrease. Likewise, when the activation is increased in the mesocortical dopamine pathway, negative symptoms of schizophrenia decrease. Now I will be telling you about the advantages and disadvantages of taking the antipsychotic risperidone. Risperidone is least likely to cause sedation and affect blood pressure. However, it does raise prolactin levels, so it's more likely to cause EPS, or extrapyramidal side effects. These can include involuntary movement disorders, pseudo-Parkinsonism, which can be a flatness of mood, muscle rigidity, and slow body movement. And in rare cases, neuroleptic malignant syndrome can occur. This syndrome can be fatal as it elevates fever, agitation, creatine levels, and can cause tachycardia. Another antipsychotic that we can compare risperidone to is quetiapine, or Seroquel. Now this antipsychotic has a greater effect on the histamine 1 receptors, which means it can be more sedating. But the advantage of risperidone is that you can give it to patients that are younger and treat adolescent schizophrenia with the right dosages. Now, you cannot prescribe risperidone to patients with Parkinson's because it will increase their symptoms. Now, I hope you learned a little bit more about risperidone today. And unfortunately, here come the bloopers. He's experiencing both positive growth effects on the brain and on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.